our goal is to have yeah so our goal is to have a cohort of 12 eligible transfer students who will be conducting paid research right um, at $20 an hour for 10 hours a week. Uh, each student will be paired with one of the four graduate mentors and a faculty mentor that is related to the area of study or interest, right? We'll go over, over a little bit later. Um, we'll go over who the faculty mentors are, what the research projects are. We have a website up and running uh, with all that information. Um, but the, the commitment to this program is a 10 hour, right? At $20 an hour. One of those hours a week, uh, will be spent with your graduate mentor and this will look uh, will be a, like a holistic uh, support meeting we will like either hook you up with other research opportunities that come our way we will help you with graduate school applications if you're thinking about graduate school uh, we can just um, you know it, it can be a moment for you to just chat about what's going on like I find like I have venting friends, friends that I'll just like hit up and be like, yo, this is what's happening. And like, I'm hella tired. And like, I just need you to listen, right? So that could be us. And the goal of like having a graduate mentor is like ha ideally have someone who has been through a similar experience and can provide that support. Um, because academia, like it's only really successful if you're doing it in the community. And so we're attempting to craft that. Um, the other nine hours will be spent working on research and meeting with your faculty mentor. Right, uh, and the commitment for this program is winter and spring quarters. Um, so that would be winter 2024 and spring quarter 2024. And that's when like the program, that, that's the, the fund, that's how long we have funding for, for this program, right? There's a complete breakdown of that on Handshake, which we will actually have some time to go over in a bit and hopefully get you started. Um, to give you some time to like work on the application uh, just so you can have it like ready. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think you froze, or either I froze. Um, hopefully you're not like me, but if you are, like, hopefully this will be a time. <laughs> what was that? I think you froze for a little while. At least, it, at least in my screen, you froze. Oh, damn. Yeah. All right. Well, um, do we have any questions so far? Um, comments, concerns, issues, secrets? Secrets. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give you all some time. I know sometimes it can be a lot of information just front loaded, um, so that's perfectly fine. I hate, I personally don't like when people be like, do, they give you a bunch of information. They're like, do you have any questions? I'm like, dude, I don't even know what to ask. Uh, so that's perfectly fine. Uh, let's go. So we want to spend like the next twenty minutes uh, going over the application together. Uh, I'm gonna open this up, and I think I have to do a new share. Give me a second. Hey, what happened? Oh, here we go. Right. Uh, so the application looks like this. So there's two applications. Well, technically one, but um, right. So on Handshake, and I'm actually going to drop the link in the chat so you all have access to it right now. Boom. Right. So this is what the Handshake application looks like. Um, and this has like additional deadline, like when it was posted, the dates. That, that the position will go through, the pay, right? Um, and you have a little bit more information about the position here, right? We are seeking 12 undergraduate students to be part of the 2024 Research Scholar Cohort and receive paid research experience, match with a faculty mentor and research project and receive additional mentorship on research and graduate school pathways from a graduate mentor. Y'all can see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, for sure. <laughs> Again, this is paid research and mentorship opportunity. Um, all the scholars that we select will support various research projects across disciplines at UCSC. Um, scholars are paired with the faculty mentor during the winter and spring quarters who will offer research assistance, right? You will be working in their labs or be working on independent projects with them, but they will provide some form of mentorship, right? Uh, and that's a little bit up to the, to the faculty lead on what that would look like, but we're asking them to meet with you like kind of regularly to make sure that you're like feeling supported um, throughout your stay with them. Um, additionally, you, again, like I've mentioned, will get guidance from graduate student mentors throughout these quarters. The the requirement, the, the dead set requirement that we absolutely need you to have is be a transfer student. So if you're not a transfer student, um, like this opportunity is probably not for you. Um, all right, job duties, 10% of that is meeting with us weekly. Um, and 80% of that is working on a research project. 
Uh, we do ask you, we may ask you sometimes to submit a weekly log hours. That's for like your lab. Um, the things that the, the graduate mentors might ask you for is to attend professional development workshops, right? Sometimes if we know that there's a workshop that will be beneficial for you, we might ask you to attend that. Um, and then we, you will also be presenting at the research symposium in the spring quarter. And the great thing about that is, is that you will be able to, that's a CV line for you, right? So the goal of that research symposium is for you to do a update on all the research and all the work that you've been doing. Um, and then you can show it off, but more importantly, get a CV line right? Because that actually matters quite a lot. And it, sometimes it's harder. Like I had no presentations slash publishing experience during my undergrad. And like coming into grad school, I realized how important that is. And so we're trying to provide front load that and provide that for you as early as possible. And so that you can also hopefully become more acquainted and more comfortable being like in a symposium or being in like at a conference, because uh, it'll be like a very good practice for it. So on this application, what it'll really ask you, it's just, did you finish your application? Yes or no. And the reason it asks that is because the actual application is on this Google form. The reason that we did that, it was just easier um, to get everything that we wanted um, covered and all the questions that we needed to ask here. Do you want to take over, Uli? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in, oh yeah, and then we had a question. Um that the meeting, the meeting is being recorded. So if you guys have to leave, if you guys have work or something, or you know someone that couldn't wasn't able to make it, we'll be posting the recording after um on the website and the HSI, uh the Cultivamos website later on today, I believe. But yeah, so going into a little bit of on the uh on the Google form, it's mostly just going to be asking you or well, giving you this information. Um, if you guys can't stay for the whole info session for today, we're also going to be having another info session Monday, 1 to 2 p.m. And that one's going to be, I mean, it would be a good opportunity also to meet the other two mentors, Daniel and Yvonne. Um, but it's pretty, uh, pretty basic. Um, Forms mostly just going to ask you for your email, first name, last name, your pronouns, majors, and college affiliation, which I believe everybody might have the same college affiliation if you're a transfer student. I don't remember, but you know, main idea: this is an opportunity exclusively for transfer students. Not, it's not based on you know anything else. It's mostly just if you're a transfer student, we want to be able to give you these pathways for. Uh, for grad school, right? Just a little bit of demographics where you transfer from. We already got um, got a little bit about that too, right? And post graduation plans. Um, I would say don't be discouraged not to apply uh, if you don't plan on doing grad school. Just take this opportunity. It's a good opportunity. Um, research experience is going to help you, even if you go into a complete different industry and that that's not the main uh, ideas uh, um we're not just the program. The students that are going to go to grad school we want to be have this opportunity for any transfer student yeah. and um, i do want to highlight that what uli's saying though like it's really important like the, although the program is geared and has a pathway towards graduate school we're not going to push you to do it and we're not expecting you to want to do it Right, like the resources will be there if that's something that you're thinking about. If you want to explore a little bit more, but again, we're not gonna force it on you, and we're not we're not gonna disqualify you or like look at your application and say like we don't want this person because they don't want to go to grad school. Like that's not what we're here to do. We're just here to give you resources, give you support, um, and then like yeah, just you know give you that research experience that otherwise may be a little bit more difficult to get. Yeah, yeah. For us, most importantly, is just exposing and like having this experience out for you guys to help you guys in your professional development. That's the main idea. So that's my, the main thing about or the main application. Um, please use, use your UCSC account, uh, your email, UCSC email. Uh, so we'll be able to just get all this information and then we can start um, reviewing the applications. Uh, yeah. so if you guys haven't done the uh, application, I recommend you guys can do it right now. We can help you guys with it. 
Yeah, I want to go over these two things really quickly, and then I think we can give y'all some time to do it. And I'll actually do it on my on my account just, just to see like what the other questions, just so y'all can see what the other questions are. But so we have this FAQs, right? So these are like the frequently asked questions, links to this file, right? Um, yeah, if for example, is a position only to transfer students? Yes. Um, is this a paid research? And I'm gonna drop this in the chat. Actually, that might be a good copy link. Right. Um, this might be something good to save. Um, and then I think the real neat part about the application is I'm going to copy this to the second link, which I'm sending. And this is actually the faculty mentors available, right? So here, and we still got more coming in. Uh, just some faculty are taking a little bit longer to send their, um, the project in but so here you'll be able to have like additional information about what who the professors are what they're working on what their labs or like research centers are working on right so for example for for example this professor hung young wang what well, you can see my what, advisor, what the my advisor too oh really so, yeah so <laughs> if you guys if you guys like applied math or computer science you guys can be able to work not only with a amazing professor he's been tenured for so long he's been here for a long time amazing uh professor I'll always hype him up and then you can also work with me too because that, that's the same problem i'm working on you Yo. <laughs> so that's what you do i feel like you've told me but i'm always like oh, i don't get it <laughs> like, um but yeah so research interest you can see with the faculty mentor um research interest and then if you click here right a little you have a little description of what they're working on, right? So we have biomolecular engineering. We have um, the Center for Economic Justice and Action. So we don't, although most of the faculty mentors are that applied are in STEM, we do have some social science slash uh, humanities who will be joining. Like I have someone from the arts department who I'm still hoping they'll, I'm still nudging them to like submit their application because um, they, they're interested, they just haven't done it. Right. Um, but like, so you can see here, we have professors from like all the different departments, press and feminist studies, uh, ecology, evolutionary biology. Right. Like I, like I said, it, we have someone from education, which I think is pretty neat. Right. Because our goal was to make sure that we had, um, we had as much um, diversity as we could. So we have a really great question by Vanessa. And they ask how much experience are they looking for in the applicant, and what are we look what are we looking for in a student? I think that's a great question. Um, as far as joining the program, we don't expect you to have any experience, right? That's the point of the program. It's um, to make sure that if you have no experience, that we can actually hook you up with some experience. Um, if you do have some experience, don't be discouraged and apply anyways, right? Um, the caveat to that is that there were some faculty who asked for like a little bit more of like additional, um, like an additional requirement. So let me actually fill this out real quick. And I think we should like give you all, let me, I can't multitask my bad. <laughs> when will they really on that if selected? When will we notify? Um, actually by the end of this month, I believe we should have reviewed and because the application closes the 15th and I think the main idea is December 1st, we will start uh, notifying uh, the people that get an interview or um, or the people that are selected, right? And then uh, kind of want to go over. So yeah, for Vanessa's point about how much experience you want, they, this and the faculty also know is, this is mostly to give an opportunity to students that are not as represented so they don't have much experience. Some of them still would like a resume, but it's mostly uh, just to gauge, you know, uh, like the charisma or the, uh, you know, the idea of like uh, how, how much you guys want this type of opportunity. So they're mostly looking on on uh, the exterior parts, not really the things that you, uh, not, as I know, and um, Ryan knows, it, if you don't have the opportunities before, then you're not gonna have the experience. So it's not really more of the experience, it's uh, the dedication of wanting to be able to, you know, hold a position like this. 
Yeah, so these are the three main questions that we're like requiring of the application, right? Please describe your background and what experiences led you to where you are today in your education. Um, we welcome you to express relevant circumstances or challenges you may have encountered on your path, such as being in the family, first in your family to attend college, financial instability, attending under resource schools, right? We wanna make sure that you touch on your experience as a transfer student. That being said, um, we also want you to be comfortable with sharing whatever it is that you feel comfortable with. We don't want you to um, think that we, you, you know, this should be, um, I don't know, there's this rhetoric around the type of uh, prompt sometimes, which is like, it can just be sort of like um, commodifying one's trauma. And that's not exactly what we want to do here. We just want to make sure that like, we get the whole picture of like who you are as a person, right? Um, it's just like mindful of these. Uh, we see, why do you want to be a Cultivamos Excelencia research scholar and how would participating in the research scholar program benefit your career and goals? And like, you can be real. Like, why do you want to be a, like a research scholar? Is like, you could be real as far as like, yo, like, life, like Uli and I know, like we're both broke too. Like, good stuff out here. Um, you know, rent is expensive. Um, and like, you need, a, you need a job and you also need the experience, right? It's like, this this question seemed to me a little bit about like why do you want to work for us? And it's like because I need to pay rent. Um, but it's real, like, and we would appreciate that realness, honestly. Yeah. Uh, and then summarize any prior work, research, or leadership experience. And I would even think about like jobs that you may not think uh, have given you this, but sometimes you know, like um, they do. Like every job, there's things that you learn to do, even like a shitty job that you like hate, um, because like you'll potentially have learned skills from that that you can apply to other things, right? Maybe how to do something quicker or maybe how to do, um, you know, how to like manage people or um, navigate tense situations because you were in these spaces before, right? So I would say like any job that you've had or and it may, maybe even not a job, like situations in which you've been in like are a good, um, um, something good to put, to put here. Uh, and I'm just going to do this so that it lets me go to the next question so y'all could check it out. Um, boom. Right. That's a hard question. It was so. This is like what? What was that? There's some questions on the chat. Last question. So, like this coursework. Um, coursework. Yeah, it can be important to like show uh preparedness. Like maybe you know if you um um I'm just gonna use like maybe uh just like an idea. So yeah. Wait, what like, was the question? Um, I don't think I heard it. Uh, also, for these questions, how much detail are they looking for um, under, underground scholar and a renaissance scholar? So any type of pointers to like talk about in like the last questions? And then also another question is, should they add like coursework or anything on your transcript? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think, go for it. No, um, we're, as far as I know, we're not requiring transcripts. So it would help if you like, yeah, if there's coursework that you've done that might help boost your application. Um, and if there's coursework that you wish you you could do, but you know, I, sometimes it's hard to get into these courses because they fill up really quick. That's also something that's like a barrier to education. And I hear often with a lot of my friends that they're trying to get a class and then the class ends up getting filled within like 30 seconds of it dropping. And so like they'll miss out on that opportunity. So that's also something that you might add into your application. Um, those are really great questions. Anything else you want to add, Uli? Um, let's see. No, but it, it is important, you know, um, especially since I do know that some of the professors, they do want to uh, have at least a resume or transcripts or something. It'd be, you know, good just to show the preparedness, maybe to, for the project, or they can give you some pointers of like, uh, oh, okay, so if you want to work in this lab, like I recommend taking this class to make the experience a little bit, you know, better in everything you know um like for me when i came into doing research with my professor with uh, my advisor uh since i didn't have a big background in cs i had to take a bunch of cs classes at, th at first i thought maybe you know like dang like i don't really want to do this but in the end it really helped me out so did he freeze for anyone else or is it just me oh did i freeze yeah you froze when you said That's... i came in with my professor and then you just froze and then we missed everything. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it uh, it's good to like um just put in the transcripts or just like the courses you did, uh 
just so if the professor says, oh, okay, yeah, um, yeah, I want this student to work with me, uh, but also recommend, you know, maybe taking an extra CS class or some type of class to help with the preparedness of, um, to work on the project, right? So I think um, that's a good thing to add on into your uh, resume or anything. Yeah, so if you look at the at the website here where we have all the faculty mentors, right? Uh, and for example, like Professor Kip Telles, they'll have like potential for more hours through a separate faculty grant. Um, but some of these professors will have asked for additional supplementary um, application materials, right? And this might be like a CV. I think someone asked for a cover letter. Um, that won't have much of a weight in like getting into the scholars program. That's more for like, if you get accepted and you like we pair you with that instructor, you will need to like we will give those materials to them, uh, so that they can have that that say, right? But as far as like getting into the research scholars program, uh, all we're really looking at are your like the previous questions that we showed earlier, and so like in this section of the application, you'll just type in their name, Mr. A, Dr. B. Dr. Ulysses, <laughs> right, he's last. Well, I think that the tea drinkers would be last, but so you'd rank your, rank your choices. And if you have any supplementary materials, right, this is the last one, right? Um, you wanna add a resume or CV. If your preferred faculty mentors require them, uh, you can upload them here. Um, and then, yeah, we have these like questions for you. you. Um, and then confirm that you have completed this form on your handshake. And if you're a winter 2024 admin, please let us know uh, because we want to make sure that like uh, we keep that for reporting reporting purposes. Is anyone here a winter admin, by the way? I do wonder. I don't know if they found out about this. Like you're starting your you're starting at UCSC in the winter quarter. Okay, for sure. Um, if you do have any question, oh damn, okay. Okay, it seems like most, oh, most, most of you guys, yeah, um, most of them were. Uh, yo, that's actually pretty. I'm glad we got uh, the information out because we were actually scared that um, uh, we wouldn't get y'all. So like, I'm glad that you y'all are here. Honestly, you're not. Are you still trying? <laughs> so right, okay, that's a great question, Mango. Which I think sort of so. This is the that leads us into the Q and A portion. I think, um, unless there's anything else that I'm missing. Because it's been a long week. <laughs> Am I missing anything? So no, I think, I think it's just yeah. go back to the slides. Not bro. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen because I just realized that I um I closed the slides. But I think um someone had a really great question that maybe you wanna you wanna address the chat. So yeah, so winter 2024 is yeah, they is that you're starting at UCSC winter quarter as a transfer. So yeah, new students. But that, of course, like Vanessa, you're not a winter admin, but you're still a transfer student. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, it doesn't, it's an equal opportunity for any transfer student. Right, so again, just to reiterate, like some faculty will ask for a resume or a CV. Um, and if you're selected, um, you can expect an interview with the Cultivamos Excelencia team and the other graduate mentors. And depending on the project, the faculty mentors as well, because like, again, some faculty wanted to do like an, an, uh, an additional vetting. Oh, you answered that question, right? Um, for sure. And I think, so now I, I, get, I think this is a good time to transition to the Q&A and also like give you the rest of the time to work on your own the application if you want to. Um, I do want to address someone asked, will the mentors be the ones evaluating the applications or is it the faculty involved plus you guys? We, it's the mentors and the program coordinator. We will be looking at going through all of the applications. Um, so there's all four, five of us, the mentors and the Cuti Almas Excelencia Research Scholar Program Coordinator. Um, and she's awesome. Uh, shout out to Annie, if you're seeing this recording. Um, and yeah, so we will be the ones who will be looking at the applications. We, again, we're looking at them, trying to help y'all connect with these resources. Like the goal of the program is literally like to help y'all out and 
for some of us to like give y'all opportunities that weren't there for us. But now we get the chance to like create these programs to make sure that those opportunities are offered to people. So we're like really, really passionate about like giving back. Like that's what we're doing it. Um, but yeah, any questions, comments, concerns, issues, secrets, plots, requests. Yeah, and if you guys, you guys can either put your questions on the chat or just unmute uh, yourself as well. Okay. okay, so it says, I know someone asked, but I didn't catch the answer. Okay, so Vanessa asked, I know someone asked, but I didn't catch the answer earlier. When would we hear back from the program? Expect to hear, ah, damn. By the end of, or by the start of December, yeah. By the end of December, there you go. Um, We... we so the application closes oh, no, by November. the beginning of December. Yeah, by the end of November. Yeah, How December first. Cool? We should be able. Yeah, that's what Annie says because it closes yeah. the fifteenth, and we're going to be reviewing them from the fifteenth to the end of um, November. And by December first, or uh, like week nine, week ten of school, we're going to start sending out uh, notifications if you got accepted or not. Yeah. So make sure you're checking that email. Um, right, because that's what, that's where we will notify you. We also have a great question from Jordan, and they're asking, how do we find out which professors want additional requirements? Um, it will be under that tab that I showed you all, right? As you're looking at all of the instructors and all of their information, they'll have a, they'll have a, um, they'll have a note on whether or not they need any like supplementary materials. Uh, Mango has a great question too. And they're asking, what if we're selected, but there isn't any research directly related to your, to our major, uh, would we then be chosen for what aligns best? Uh, so like when you apply, you, like I showed you, will rank uh, who you want to work with. Um, and I think I sort of went over, I in my head, I did it, but now I'm realizing that I don't think I showed you all that part of the application. So shame on me. Um, so let me go back to that actually. Right. Well, he's doing, um, well, you I can, can kind of answer oh. that too. But yeah. yeah. If, um, if there's something that's not, you know, specifically for your major, the, um, yeah, you'll be aligned with which, which uh, faculty mentor that's more um, closely to rated, uh, related to your field. And a lot of these professors also, what they are open to is, just working on independent projects. So maybe um, if the project that you're, uh, or that they're working on or um, the job that they want you to do is not really, you know, closer of interest to you, you can work on independent projects still with the faculty, right? Even if it's a complete different major, as long as it's some somewhat related, right? Yeah. And so you actually get to rank like what your top three choices are, right? for the, um, who you would want to work with. And yeah, so this is what we will also be using this for because you can have additional information about, uh, whoops. Um, not only will, does our website where it shows all of the current research projects show if any of them need supplementary materials, but um, you can also use that to check who's looking for independent research. And maybe you want to, that, that might want to be your first choice uh, because none of the other choices really call out to you, right? Um, so yeah. So great question from Jordan again. What do the 10 hours of work look like? And it is a, like assigned a task or more open-ended. So in that 10 hour work week, and then you can also um, on the handshake application, it has a great breakdown also as well um, about how it looks like. But uh, so one hour a week is gonna be a meeting between um, us, uh, like me and Brian, um, the mentor. So you you will be meeting with your mentor at least one hour a week. Um, and then another hour would be with your faculty mentor. It'd be just like a research talker, like what did you work on uh, throughout the week? And the other eight hours, it really depends on the project that you do. It, it can be completely different, but it's mostly just working on the project either independently or with your uh, with your team, right? So like for, for myself, um, like I, I, I follow similar structure, maybe not 10 hours, do work a little bit more on that. Um, but it's the same thing. I have one meeting once a week with my uh, PI, uh, with my advisor, right? And that's the more like physical uh, 
meeting like aspect of it. The rest 80% of it is mostly just going to be independent worker working on a team, working on the research project, right? Yeah. So it really does vary. Yeah. Like as for the actual work that you'll be doing, it also like very much varies depending on the lab or the research cluster that you're, that you're work that you'll be working with. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments, concerns? And also, I know there's a lot of information. So um, if you do have questions, feel free to email me. I'm going to type my email in the chat. Um, but also the Cultivamos Excelencia. Can you type the, the Cultivamos Excelencia email on there? Can you grab it from the Google form, Uli? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's also an email, an email that you can like hit up. All right, so Mango's also asking, will there be more opportunities like this for the fall or as of now, I said only for winter and spring? For now, it's only for winter and spring. That's what our funding allows us to do. Um, we're hoping that programs like this and the feedback that you give to the program will show the university that there is a need and a want for programs like these and so that they'll fund them because this money is coming directly out of an HSI grant, right? Uh, and so like it's not funding that's permanent and so we're what we're hoping to do is show like by the end of the program show the university that we actually you know put that money to good use helped out students and show them like hey you know this is something y'all should probably fund long term uh, because there is a need for it yeah that's a great question yeah, so for the fall, it's mostly just the application process, and then winter and spring will hit running together, uh, working on it together. And then hopefully, like uh, Brian said, if, you know, if this goes really well, you know, if this is really, you know, a good initiative and in helping students, transfer students be more successful, uh, then hopefully, like starting 2024, uh, fall quarter and all that will be open to having more want more research scholars and more like mentors and have a, you know, uh, a bigger um, experience, right? But as of now, yeah, it's just winter and spring. Any other comments, questions? Yeah. And also working uh, with the faculty, you know, that goes well, you know, maybe you just work on with us cultivamos just winter and spring, but it can also you know help you guys get more work for later on for uh, for your next year and everything. You, you'll have some funding. You'll have a work like that, right? Depending on the professor, of course. Yeah. Anyone else? Are y'all excited? Are y'all are y'all coming from far? And I would wonder, like, for the winter admins, like, are you coming from far? Because that must be like difficult finding like housing and getting acclimated. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good question. How are you guys later. getting acclimated? It is six hours away. Oof. Okay. Yeah, you have to. Uh, that, yeah, that's not a communable distance. Six hours away. You need to move here. Um, yeah. And so, like, the goal of having the mentors, too, is, like, asking these questions. I'm not ready for the call. Bro, I, I'm from L.A., so, like, when I moved here last year, I was oh, cold. Oh, Mr. L.A., Mr. L.A. <laughs> dude, not chill. Yeah, yeah, Y'all need to get yourselves a heater or something. Um, Because it is an adjustment, honestly. Like, it's not that Also, bad. dude, I live, no, see, I live in the school. Oh. And so, like, it gets cold, cold, cold. It's windy over here. I'm fighting for my life. Mood. Um. Yeah, and so like, but like questions like these, I think are important to ask because sometimes when we're in these spaces, like it really becomes about like an academic, like, are you an academic? Like, how are you being an academic? And it's like, we're more than that. You know, we're people first, students second, workers third. And that's like a very important, at least to me, you know, distinction to make. And so like, yeah, that's why I'm wondering like, how's it going? Like, I also want to get to know all of y'all as people, not just academics, so. We're also here to support y'all, even if you don't get into the program. So if y'all have questions about like programs or like anything that might be like popping around campus, like feel free to shoot me an email on Uli too. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna throw them in there. Uh, you know, like, um, oh shit, East Los, let's go. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but yeah, feel free to shoot us an email like and ask questions, you know, like 
yo yeah. is there any programs for this like uh there's like a, there's a lot of programs here like at other universities for like undocumented students queer students uh indigenous students right and sometimes they're hidden or not not purposefully or just like you know not a lot of people know about them and so like having a, a community of, of learning is very helpful because we can hook you up with like um opportunities that might otherwise not come your way um and so i think like that's that's a win in and of itself yeah. and for y'all all of y'all coming to santa cruz i'm just gonna warn y'all the food here is not good so enjoy your last few um yeah. your last few good meals because <laughs> you're gonna be we'll have to go to san jose well i mean that's a good thing about transfer student if, if you drive you you have the opportunity yeah it's not good at all this is terrible uh yeah damn you know yeah. I've, we, we've all probably been spoiled eating you know really good like at least personally for me really good mexican food at home so here uh, i'm so disappointing i miss my family's cooking i miss it too and it's been it's been eight years for me since i was 18 oh god yeah there is some places if you guys like korean food sesame in downtown is pretty 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 good i would recommend that one that was a good place just stay away from porter yeah, <laughs> porter. yeah no i pc food is terrible that shit is ass oh damn we, we are recording so i probably should watch my language before <laughs> i curse all the but, time uh, anyways, so I don't I'm, matter. Matter. I'm like what's i gonna do yeah, what, um, yeah what are they also, gonna do y'all have questions for us also <laughs> next thing you know you're, y'all are fired um <laughs> also if um you see dc i'm learning towards you see I don't even, I don't know what UCSC, UCSC but... I'm guessing, right? Aaron, is it UCSC or is it? Nah, it's a program where you go to DC, like and work there. Oh. Yeah. Oh, for sure. How can I um, well, that, I guess, I'm not sure if like that is like, like is it a school? I'm not entirely sure. Um, no, nah, it's but... like a, it's like another kind of internship program. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's just through um, like the UC system, but okay. it does not like Hispanic focus, you know? So I was thinking like, you know, how can I still get plugged in? Yeah. Well, I, we have a, a Instagram page that you can follow. Like if you're, if you're coming to UCSC, you're coming to UCSC, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, all right. For sure. So like we have an Instagram page and you can always like, um, yeah. Um, check us out there. And you can also email that email that I'm going to put in the chat again. Um, let's see. Ooh. Yeah. Because that, uh, that is also going to plug like a bunch of like uh, programs that are that come from HSI, right? Yeah. So, so we can I'll, add I'll you to that. our mailing list, actually, right? If you email like that email and let us know, like, hey, I want to get on uh, the HSI mailing list, um, and you like start getting periodical emails, and then once you get here, there's like a lot of a bunch of different uh, on cap on campus resources that who that send out weekly newsletters. Like we have the El Centro with it, which is the Chicanx, Latinx, Latine. Um, um research uh, no, ethnic studies center we have the asian american ethnic study and pacific islander study center the american indian aarc i don't know what it stands for but it's like the american indian ethnic study center um and so like we have different center like we have the Kantu queer study center and so like each of these you can also sign up for their mailing lists and they'll like hook you up hook you up with a bunch of different yeah. Uh, resources. Any other questions? And maybe if not, not specifically about the program, but also like about UCSC or, um, and maybe you can stop recording just in case they want to ask something that yeah. they don't want to put on blast. 